Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and before we get into this episode, I wanted to do a little PSA and remind you that I put out multiple shows a week of Old Time Radio Westerns. You can check them out by going to otrwesterns.com or looking up OTR Westerns on your podcast application of choice. We are releasing over 10 episodes a week so far, about 100 a month. So definitely want you to check that out. Again, otrwesterns.com and check it out. I also wanted to invite you to check out my sister podcast site, OT Netcast, and that's N-E-T-C-A-S-T. So O-T N-E-T-C-A-S-T, Netcast, otnetcast.com. We're currently releasing mystery genre shows, and this is shows like The Shadow, Escape, Suspense, and The Whistler. And we have plans on bringing other shows to the network for you guys to listen to. So it's my non-Western old-time radio channel that I can kind of do other genres that not only I like, but hopefully you would like too. You can check us out by going to otnetcast.com or searching O-T-N-E-T-C-A-S-T on your podcast app of choice. Now let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be The Lone Ranger, original air dates November 19th, 1945, and the title is Foster Brother. Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Let's go, big fellow! Are you Silver? Paul Markheim had a big ranch and two 17 year old sons. Tom was Markheim's own son. Jim had been adopted. It was mid-afternoon when Jim came out of the general store in Grant's Pass. There was a commotion at the hitch rail. Throw me, will you? I'll teach you. I'll show you who's boss. Tom, Tom, you lay off of that whip. You keep back or I'll give you the same. Don't raise that whip to my horse again. He can't throw me and get away with it. I'll show him. Tom, I'll show him. Give me that whip. I'll give it to you. 
Why, you... How'd you like it? You've been asking for this for a long time, and now you're going to get it. Oh. You had that coming, John. Why, you hit me. Maybe that'll teach you not to lambaste a horse. Oh, lambaste you. And here's another. Try your fists on me, will you? Oh, you stop. You hold whip. I'll show him. He take whip. Give me that. Mind your own business. You hit fellow with whip. It's not fair. You confounded meddling hey, wrench again. Whip. Whip, hey, hey, don't no. let Tom have it. When do you keep whip. out of this? It's none of your affair. Now, Tom, calm down. You hurt bad, Jim? No. I guess not. I've uh, seen the whole thing from down the street. You're mixing up my affairs, I'll have Dad fire you. Now, Tom, don't talk foolishly. Well, Jim, hit me. I can put up with what you do to me, Tom. But I'm hanged if you can use a whip on my horse. Hey, sue me. You had no business trying to ride Jim's horse. Well, you're all against me. You wait. Wait till Pa hears that Jim knock me down. You get all that's coming to you, Jim. You just wait. Well, chances are he'll tell a pack of lies, Jim. You can count on me to back you up. I seen the whole thing. So does Injun. Golly, he'd have let me have the next one in the face if he hadn't grabbed his arm. Thanks a lot. Oh, it's all right. Me glad, me nearby. I'm Jim Markheim. Uh, me Tonto. Why, my name's not really Markheim. Sure it is, Jim. The old man adopted you when your dad was killed. According to law, you're as much his son as Tom is. Uh, Tonto, you can call me Wendy. Ah. I've been cowhanded on Markheim Ranch since before Tom was born. Was with Markheim when he got married and with him when his wife died. Fact is, I knew him when he was a pies and mean bully and critter like Tom. D- did Pa Markheim used to be like Tom? He did. Jim, you've had to put up with an awful lot from Tom. I've been watching things. I've been hoping that someday Tom would get hold of himself like his pa did and turn over a new leaf. Pa Markheim sure thinks a heap of Tom. Yep. Wendy, don't tell Pa about today. No? Let Tom tell whatever story he wants. But raise the whip to you, Jim. I know, but Pa Markheim is already worried about something. I've seen the look on his face of late. It won't help any for him to find out what a mean sidewinder Tom is. I I don't want to hurt Pa. He's been too good to me. Well, I don't hanker to hurt the old man, but I sure hate to see Tom get away with his high-handed doons and his lies. Maybe, as you say, he'll change when he gets older. Well, I got a shove on. Oh, me too. I expect Tom will have told a fancy story by the time I get to the ranch. <laughs> I figured he would. I suppose you've had time to tell him a fancy story, huh, Tom? I told him how you knocked me down. Showed him my cut lip, too. There he is, Pa. Hello, Jim. Had a little trouble in town, eh? Yes, sir. I guess Tom's told you about it. I sure did. We won't talk about that. You two have to settle your own arguments. But, Pa, you said you wanted to see Jim as soon as he got back from town. I do. I've got something important to tell both of you. I've made a will. When I die, this ranch will belong to you two boys. It's a 50-50 split. Pa, you don't mean that... Mark, I'm a... Well, you can't let Jim share equal with me. Why, why, he's an orphan. Well, do, Tom. I adopted Jim as my son. Remember that. Gosh. Pa, Mark, I... Something's closed. I hope the two of you will learn to get on without fighting. You better go tend to your chores. That's all. By the way, Jim. Yes, sir? I saw you chopping Tom share the wood a couple of times. No more of that. He should do his own chores. Huh. Spying on me, huh? Uh, wish Tom would change. Is it all right for me to come in? Sure thing, Wendy, any time. Uh, look here, boss. I got to tell you the truth about how Tom got knocked down. I know you got plenty of worries, but just the same... What I... makes you think that? Well, I can tell by the way you've been looking for the past few months. I hate like tarnation to try and tell you that your own son is... A... Well, I hate to tell what I've been seeing for the past ten years. Wendy, I don't want to listen. But, boy, Wendy, she... a man don't make much money by being asleep. I've made a pile in my day... Don't try to tell me things. I know what's going on around here. I'm trying to figure out what to do about it. Tom was determined that Jim would not share his father's wealth. For several days, he tried to think of a way to discredit his foster brother. Finally, he had an idea. As the first step of his plan, 
He became more friendly than Jim had ever seen him. Daily, he rode with Jim, worked with him, and talked with him. Then, one day, while the two young men were riding... Jim, I finally learned what's worrying my father. Well, what is it? I'd do most anything to help him. Well, I don't know what we can do, Jim. We can't give him the kind of help he needs. Well, what does he need? He needs money, and lots of it. Money, huh? Yep. He stands to lose everything he's got. Oh, gosh, that'd be a shame after working so hard all his life. Why will he lose everything? Well, as near as I can find out, there's a big mortgage on this ranch, and he can't meet it. I wonder how much cash he needs. Huh. More than we'd ever be able to get. I guess he needs about five or six thousand dollars. Gosh, as much as that? Yep. He don't want us to know it, though, so don't say anything about it. Well, how did you find out? I saw some letters on his desk. Oh. Jim, if we could only find a gold miner or something like that. <laughs> Small chance of that. I'd go a long ways to help, Pa. You sure changed in the past week, Tom. I... Well, I guess I got a new slant on things, Jim. Well, I'm sorry well, for a lot of things. Oh, forget it. Whoa, whoa, boy, whoa. You willing to forget oh, the past? Sure thing. I wish there was some way we could help Pa, Mark. I'm... Oh, there's no call for you to do anything. It's my worry. This is much call for me to help, even more. I sure owe him plenty for all he's done for me. Well, you've got no idea how I'd like to repay him for being so good to me. If I only had more nerve, I'd get him the cash he needs. I'd steal it. Oh, you'd have to tell him where the money came from. If I could get the cash, I'd think of some way to explain how I got it. They wouldn't touch stolen money. Oh, you wouldn't know where it came from. I'd tell him I found gold or something. Wouldn't matter what he was told. Wouldn't even matter if he didn't believe it. He'd have the cash. That's the main thing. Yeah. I reckon so. I wish I had more nerve. Why? Oh, oh nothing. Pa's oh, sure a fine fella. It's tough to see him so worried. Be even worse to see him lose his ranch. Probably kill him. Tom, what would you do if you had more nerve? Oh, I... Oh, nothing, Jim. Just forget that I spoke. Ah, see here, I Tom... I shouldn't have mentioned it. Well, tell me. Well... Well, the fact is, Jim, I know where there's about $5,000 cash that can be had by a man with the nerve to take it. Oh? Where? Express office. Yeah? How do you know there's that much cash there? Oh, there ain't that much right now. But there will be next Monday night. I heard the agent telling the sheriff that was coming here. Oh, I see. Well, well, I got to ride over and check the South Line fence. Yeah. Get up, boy. See you later, Tom. Get up. Tom had planted seeds that soon bore fruit. Jim spent long hours in thought as he wrote about his chores. Then, when he reached a decision, he found occasion to talk to Wendy. You going somewhere, Wendy? Uh, we're just fixing a ride into town, Jim. All right. Something's happened. I wanted you to be the first to know about it. Yeah? What's happened? Has the old man found out what an ordinary critter Tom is? I've struck it rich. You what? Gold. I found gold. Gold? Great day. Oh, you don't mean that, Jim. I don't, huh? There ain't no gold around here. You mean no one's ever found gold around here. Well... Maybe it's not gold I found. But if it ain't, the gent that's offering to buy my rights is the one that's out. You mean you already got a buyer? I'm going to have $5,000 for Pa Markheim before another two days has passed. Great day. That's the best news of the year. Bad Juniper. Say, do you mind if I spread the news in town? I don't see as it'll do any harm. Then I'm on my way. I'm blowing my whole month's pay to make the welkin ring. Stand aside. I got to get going. Get up there. Get up there. Set him up again, barkeep. Drinks for everyone on me. <laughs> Step right up, boys. It's my night to celebrate. What's got into you, Wendy? Yeah. What's all the celebrating for? Well, it's for Jim. He struck it rich. Uh, Get it, my kind of place? Yes, sirree. Jim's found gold. What? Oh, oh, oh. In the excitement, no one noticed the Indian that stood near the end of the bar. Tonto had gone to the cafe for supplies. He paid for the food and left. A moment later, he joined the Lone Ranger, who was waiting in the shadows near the cafe. Did you get the things we need, Toto? Uh, me get them. But it take long time. There seems to be quite a bit of excitement in the cafe. Not right. 
Did I hear someone mention gold? Ah, old fella from Markheim Ranch. Old Wendy? That right. Him plenty happy. Him say Jim Markheim find gold. Jim Markheim? Ah. That's the boy you saw the other day. That right. You know him? Oh, yes. Markheim adopted him a long time ago. Oh. I remember Jim as a little fellow. His mother died, and his father was killed in a fight over a poker game. That right. Markheim adopted the boy and raised him just the same as he did his own son. Ah. Well, old Windy say Jim find gold. Windy must be mistaken. Him tell what Jim say. If there was any gold around here, Kimosabe, we'd have heard of it. Someone would surely have found it by this time. Not what me think. The discovery of gold in this part of the country would change a lot of things. It would be the end of cattle raising. That's right. If Jim's really found gold. We've got to know about it. We go ask him? Yes. Jim at ranch now. Then that's where we're going. Put that food into your saddlebag and mount up. curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Continue our story. The Lone Ranger knew that the discovery of gold would cause great changes in the ranching community. He wanted to learn more about the announcement that Jim Markheim had found gold. To do this, he rode with Tonto to the large Markheim ranch house. I want to look at Jim before we rap on the door. Keep your voice down. Windows open. Uh. Looks like a straightforward fellow. He's inherited his father's strength, not his weaknesses. He'll be all right. What him say? Wait, Tonto. You don't need to worry at all, Dad. I've already got a chance to sell the claim. You have? Yeah, I, uh, I expect it may bring several thousand dollars. I, I, I'd like to sort of split what I get with you and pull stakes. Pull stakes? You mean leave here? I, maybe I'll come back sometime, Dad, but I... You what? Well... I just have to get out and see the world, that's all. Oh, shucks. Maybe sometime you'll understand. I I guess I'll go and see the man that's thinking of buying my claim. I may be able to close the deal tonight. Who is it? Well, it's... Oh, oh it ain't likely you'd know him. He, he's a stranger around here. He, he comes from the east. Good night, Pa. Good night, Jim. Yeah, darn it all. What's got into Jim? Now we go see Jim. We'll talk to him when he leaves the house. Him say, got chance to sell claim. I still can't believe that he's found gold around here. Maybe find it in stream. Maybe wash the mountains long way off. Maybe... Wait. Wait a minute, Toto. Someone else has just come into the room. Ah. That must be Markheim's own son. You've been in town, eh, Tom? Yes, I have. And Wendy's telling it all over town that Jim has found a gold claim. Yes, Jim told me about it. He's spreading that story to account for having cash. Daddy's going to steal the money. Uh, that's a mighty grave charge, Tom. Well, I'll bet on it. I saw him at your desk, prowling through your private papers. You did? He didn't know anyone was watching him. When he went away, I went to the desk to see what he'd been reading. It was a paper that told about a lot of cash arriving at the express office for you. Oh? Dad, he's planning to steal that money. He'll account for having the cash by saying he sold his gold claim. That doesn't sound like Jim. Now, you wait and see. If he does what I think he'll do, he'll step right into a hornet's nest. How's that? I sent a note to the express agent, telling him that there might be a robbery tonight. Uh, oh. If Jim tries anything, 
he'll get caught. One silver! Darkness shrouded the express office and the area around it. The darkness hid several well-armed men who waited to trap anyone who attempted to get near the cash box that stood in the corner. Old Windy was among those who had been enlisted by the sheriff. He crouched next to the station agent. Do you think the critter that sent you that information knew what he was talking about? Well, he seemed to. Is he much cash in the office? Sure is, Windy. There's over $5,000 in food and money there. Whew. It belongs to your boss. My kind? Yeah. Send him word that it was here. I wish he'd have got it. Well, if it's stole, you're responsible, ain't you, Hank? No, I ain't, but the express company is. Uh, keep quiet. Someone moving over there. See that dark shadow? Yeah. Don't make no move yet. Let him get inside and get his hands on the cash. That's the ticket. We'll get him with the goods. He's at the door. Uh, was the door unlocked? Yeah, hardly ever locked the door. Come on now. We close in on him. The others will close in from the other side. What the? Who fired? Who's in? Get him. Come on, Wendy. That shot means a showdown. We got him. He's trapped inside. Shoot if he makes a break. Come on inside, Wendy. I'm right with you. All right, you heist him. Get him up. I'll get a light. You freeze. Make a move now. Blow your head off. Wendy. Great day, Jim. Is that you? Jim Markheim. Here's a light. So you're the Stephen Polk cat. All of you. Hey, what the? Drop your guns. Who's that? He's masked. Jim's partner. Drop them quickly. Get your hands up. Well, the rest of you can give up, but I'm hanged if I let these crooks get away without gunplay. I'll show you. Seems to me Wendy's a mighty long time in town. Oh, maybe I was right, Dad. Maybe Jim tried to rob the express office. That would keep Wendy in town. He'd stay there to see what happened. Uh, I hear something. Boy stopped outside. Maybe that's Wendy. Maybe he'll have news for us. I'll go see. I want to see your father. Mast. Hello, Mark Hyman. What, what's this mean? Step outside. Well, don't rob us. You stay here and keep still. Come on, Mark Hyman. I want to talk to you. You won't need a gun. Very well. I can stand right here and talk, Markheim. I knew you years ago. You, you did. I might remember you if you took the mask off. You've improved since then. Perhaps your son will do the same. What do you mean? I saw Wendy in town. He'll be here in a little while. He'll bring you news that might make a man of Tom. It depends on how you handle the news. But I, I don't understand. Did did anything happen in town? I mean... I, I know what you mean. And it did happen. Now listen to me for a few minutes. Listen carefully. When Markheim returned to the house, he had little to say to his son. He gave no explanation of the masked man. He answered all of Tom's questions with a sober nod or a shake of his head. Then Wendy rode up and rapped on the door. That's Wendy. I saw him through the window. Good evening, Tom. Wendy. Come in, Wendy. Yeah. Well, boss, I reckon I got some unpleasant news for you. I heard about the affair in town. About Jim? Yes. I can't imagine why I tried to rob the express office. Jim, of all people. He got caught at it, huh? You see, Dad, I was right. Boss, you heard about the shooting? Yes. Doggone fool of a station agent. He shot before he stopped to use his head. There was gunplay? You bet there was. Oh. Last thing Jim said to me was... Was Jim killed? What do you think, Tom? Well, I didn't think he'd be killed. Well, Sam, I guess we can thank you for being rid of a thief, huh? It was you that suspected what Jim was about to do. You was the one that tipped off the law. You done that, Tom? Well, yeah. Well, why in blazes did you tell the law? Well, I... You knew why Jim was taking that cash? You knew that it was to help your pa? To help me? Sure. Jim got the idea you needed cash. He was going to steal that cash and give it to you, then clear out. 
He and Tom cooked up that story about a gold mine so he could account for the cash. Yes, I see. Then you went and double-crossed Jim, didn't you? Well, I... I, I... Word of it, Windy. Huh? <laughs> Tom's proved himself a chip off the old block. At last time you woke up. What's that? In this world, you've got to get what you want. If you ain't got the brute strength to take it, you've got to use your head. That's what you did. Boss. Yes, sir, you use your head. In this world, if a man wants to get rich, he's got to be cold. He's got to step on them that stand in his way. You wanted the whole ranch, not just half of it, didn't you, Tom? Oh, yeah, but... So I... you found a way to get it. You tricked Jim into sticking his neck in the news. Now, that's real smart. You'll be a success, Tom. You'll be a rich man, that's what you'll be. But I, I didn't expect he'd be killed, yeah, What's the difference? What's the life of one man as long as you can't be hung for the killing? Can't let friendship or sentiment stand in the way if you want to get where I am. Dad, you never talked that way before. Because you never proved yourself. Well, aren't you... aren't you sorry about Jim? You were my son. Seeing you turn out a cold-blooded, smart-thinking sharpshooter makes me real proud. I began to think you was nothing but a mollycoddle. But Jim... Jim was pretty square with me, Ah, Dad. Ah, sentimental slush. Well, he was. Took an awful lot from me. I didn't... I didn't think he'd be killed. I... I... Oh, forget it. From now on, you and me will plan some big deals. Now that I see you ain't afraid to hurt people, we can get... Dad, stop it. You're not talking like you used to. You never talked that way before. What about it? I don't want no part of your deals. What's the matter with you? You show me what you are. I'm just trying to show you that I'm the same breed, that's all. No, Dad, no, you're not. Nothing but a murderer, I... Kill my best friend, Dad. I never stopped the thing. You wanted Jim out of the way. I don't. You wanted the whole of this ranch, didn't you? Well, now you've got it. Ain't you pleased? No. No, I'm not. I give up the whole thing to bring Jim back. Just a minute. What did you say? I said I'd give up everything I got or, or ever will have to bring Jim back. Yeah. When you see yourself in someone else, you don't like it, do you? No. No, I don't, Dad. Come here, Tom. You're going to get what not many men get. You're going to get another chance. What what do you mean, Dad? Jim ain't dead. He isn't. But, but Wendy. Wendy, you said... I said there was (laughs) gunplay. The station agent pulled his gun on a certain hombre. He didn't shoot Jim? <laughs> no, he got his gun shot out of his hand and his hand doggone near busted by the critter he drew on. <laughs> oh, but Jim... He'll be here in a few minutes. Tom, that masked man knew me years ago. He knew how I started out, a lot like you. It took a lot to make me see what an ordinary buzzard I was. I never realized what, it, what it'd be like to double-cross a friend. Dad, tell me something. Eh? Yeah. You didn't mean it. You didn't want me to, well, to be rich if it meant stepping on friends, did you? <laughs> Son, more than anything else in the world, I wanted to hear you say you'd give all you had to get Jim back. Uh, here's Jim now. Hi there. Jim. Oh, Jim, I've been an ornery scheming polecat. Well, Tom, I, I darn near was a thief. I reckon we both got reforming to do. Jim, you cursed fool. Was you really going to steal money for me? Well, Pa, you looked so worried, I... Not for cash, Dad, read it. I was worried about my boy. If ever I give you cause for worry again, Pa, I hope Jim knocks a living daylights out of me. <laughs> Windy, do you remember the time you knocked the daylights out of me, him? <laughs> I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what about you and the law, Jim? You in bed? Well, the sheriff listened to that mask, man. And said he'd give me another chance. Oh, then we both got a second chance. And both of you see that you make the most of it. You know, the Lone Ranger might not be around to help you the next time.
story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day and thanks for listening.